Here's one towards the goal. That's going to be blocked by Travis Ridgen. Well, this is more like it. This is Slang in the Biscuit. Here's Travis Ridgen and Dave Wheeler. Ladies and gentlemen, lads and ladies, this is going to be episode 44 of the Sling the Biscuit podcast. It's an amazing day. It's an exciting day, both in the city of Winnipeg, down at the legendary Palomino Club, home of Booty Shake Monday, where my <laughs> incredible co-host, Mr. Dave Wheeler, is live on location. Dave, how's it looking down there? Yeah, things are good, man. I'm looking forward to some beauties only weather, but I know it uh, might be sunny where you are, but it's a little drafty where Travis Ridgen is right now. Are we going to get in some draft talk a little bit later on? Yeah, well, that is incredible. That's 20 years of radio right there. It's fine. I like that. <laughs> so I, I know draft day happened this past Thursday. Uh, if you were online looking around, I don't know if they updated the FPHL website yet or not, but uh, when do we get to find out where uh, Travis Ridgen is going to be playing, a.k.a. Trav4? First off, we got to back up first. So the FPHL, I apologize in advance if anybody's being confused because I am just as confused because... It seems that the rules, the rule book, the everything changes depending on the day of the week. So again, apologies if it's confusing, but this is the rules as of uh, Thursday recording for Sunday's episode. So the FPHL was a league of 10 teams last year, 10 with two hands. I only have one because one's holding the mic. If you're on the video version, but that's 10. Um, take a shoe one off. One team. Take a shoe. Yeah, 10, <laughs> 20. After we go past 20 teams, you can't count anymore. You ever seen that... Uh, that clip with uh, Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. Hey, gentlemen, give me a quick count to 10. <laughs> Nate can only count to five. <laughs> and he gets so mad. He's like, I, I can count to 10, too. You're the one who can't count to 10. <laughs> Got more money than all of you. <laughs> He's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Love those guys. Okay. Are we are you, are we going to get into it right away? Like, to tell you what, why don't you give us the rules? You, you give us the breakdown, and then we'll, we'll hold the actual team hostage. Yes, we'll absolutely do that. So... Uh, 10 teams. So the Delaware Thunder are not going to be playing for next season or the year, year after. They've been kicked out of their arena. They don't have a new arena, so they've decided instead of moving the team, relocating, they said, you know what, we're just going to build a new arena. So they're going to build a new arena, go dormant for two years, and then reappear for the 2024-25 season. The Elmira Mammoth, which we've documented over the past couple of episodes, that's the team that forgot their jerseys in Motor City this year and had to wear roller hockey jerseys. Remember that, Dave? Oh, you know, all too well. All too well. It's one thing to forget knee pads, but to forget your entire bundle of unis. Ooh. I would have paid money to be on that bus when they realized, oh, we forgot the jerseys. Shit. What do we do? No, you you just shut up and go, huh? Yeah, I thought we were missing something. <laughs> did did you forget to put them? Did, yeah, some, some, someone forgot to put them in, coach. I don't know. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. The Elmira Mammoth are done. Uh, they have been evicted from First Arena by the Mammoth Sports and Entertainment Group. I guess, again, I'm not taking sides. I'm just presenting the facts that I know. I, do, I don't have any inside information. I just go off what comes out online. But First Arena, where the Elmira Mammoth, Elmira Mammoth play, kicked them out because apparently the lease was $1 a year in return for uh, Steve Donner, who's the owner of the Elmira Mammoth, paying the electricity, the hydro, and the operating costs of the building. That's it. Right. Uh, from what is online... Guy didn't pay a single dollar of his bills, so they said get out, which obviously is how it works when you don't pay your bills. Pretty um, standard. Sounds about right. Yep, no, no squatting in First Arena down in Elmira, New York. So uh, they were kicked out of the arena. Then Steve Donner surrendered the team to the county, so the Elmira County now owns the team, which I'm being told Barry Soskin, who owns five FPHL teams, is now going to take over operating and own a sixth team. And he owns currently the Port Huron Prowlers, Carolina Thunderbirds, the Binghamton Black Bears, uh, the Mississippi Sea Wolves, soon to be the um, Elmira Mammoth, and I'm forgetting somebody, Dave. Who am I forgetting? It's Dan- not not Dan, not the Danbury Hattricks. Nope, Danbury is owned independently because Barry hasn't won a championship for five years. So Watertown is owned uh, by Ashley. Uh, Baton somebody Rouge, else, Port Huron, uh, Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge as well. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so that's that's gonna be six teams owned by Barry Soskin apparently for next season, which uh, an absolute. Uh, Monopoly tycoon Barry Sawson has become. He owns over half the league, which is crazy. Um, so that's supposed to be happening. As far as the expansion teams go, the Danville Dashers were supposed to come back after the uh, Vermilion Bobcats in the SPHL just folded up shop and went home halfway through the season. Uh, but they weren't able to get a deal done in time for, I guess, leasing the arena for all season. So the goal is for next year, the Danville Dashers will return, which leaves us with two brand new teams. The and Please correct me if you're a local here if I said the name wrong, because apparently we've been saying it wrong this whole time. The Wyattville Pro Hockey Team or the Withville Pro Hockey Team, or as Dave likes to call it, the 
White Villa World Pro Hockey Team or the Baton Rouge Pro Hockey Team. Very official. <laughs> By the way, though, um, I, I believe if it's in Virginia, it would be the Wytheville. So it's kind of like, I think like, and I could be wrong here. I'm just making it up as I go. But uh, imagine that there's no S and you, you, you shove your tongue in between your teeth and you go Wytheville. So you want to say w- Wiseville? Say, say Wiseville, but skip the S-E part. Wiseville. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm assuming it is based on the accent and how they pronounce things around them parts. I believe it'd be Wyth- Wytheville County in Virginia, southwestern Virginia, right underneath West Virginia. It's just up north there, just over them mountains. So that's the, the team region for next season. By the way, me and Joe Pace are going to own a team for 2020 or for 2030. Excuse oh. me. I got to must I got to muster up some funds. Joe has to find some people with some little deeper pockets. And uh, I think we're going to pull it together, hopefully, by 2030. All I don't the know more where, reason. But. All the more reason to tell your friends to sign up for our Patreon page where we uh, are, are working towards a very nice elevated system depending on how much you pay per month you get different perks and you get different toys and you get cards it's like going through the drive through and a kid again you're like what am i gonna get my happy meal if you're a patreon member sign up now there's a whole bunch of different levels and it's ex- all explained on the website am i correct yes and i finally did my job i finally got the uh, merchandise done last week so there's going to be sling the biscuit mugs which you'll see on the video version of the screen uh that we're going to be coming in hopefully tomorrow uh to my apartment and then uh, some merchandise, so some Sling the Biscuit hoodies as well. So if you're a member, you're going to be getting access to that and some cards depending on the price point you choose. So if you're a $5 a month member, you get my rookie cards from Motor City and Varberg. If you're a seven fifty a month member, you're going to get those two cards and a mug. If you're a $10 a month member, you're going to get the brand new six-piece regular trading card set uh, from this season and all my junior college days. If you're a $15 a month member, you're going to get that plus, I believe, the mug. And if you're a $20 a month member, you're going to get the collector set uh, holographic cards and for 25 you get the collector's holographic set the regular trading card set the mug the sweater and the rookie cards for 25 bucks a month to support the podcast and also if you pitch in a couple bucks that money will go towards buying an fphl team one day and possibly <laughs> getting you some free entertainment which we will then charge you for again at the door and overcharge you on beer and parking <laughs> bring your piggy banks down now and smash them open in the parking lot let's go <laughs> you imagine? I feel like a family guy cutaway scene. I just got a vacuum just sucking up people's money. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. You, you got to do what the peelers do. They they have like a, like, a, like a string and then a magnet at the bottom. That's what they do. Go around and pick up all the change. Stick, <laughs> sticks of this magnet. Not I've, I've heard. I've heard. I've, I've never seen it before in person. Like straight out of semi-pro with uh, Will Ferrell, Jackie Moon. It's like the Titanic, but it's full of bears. No <laughs> refunds will be given. Your <laughs> refund will be escaping this death trap of your life. <laughs> Don't feed doing any sugars. Love By the drinks. way, speaking of Will Ferrell, did you hear? Uh, we're allowed to talk other sports on this uh, on this show. I certainly hope everyone's okay with this. But if you haven't heard yet, Will Ferrell is set to play, if you can believe this or not, John Madden in an upcoming biopic based on the former uh, NFL analyst and coach. Wow, really? When's that coming yeah. out? You know, what um, else do you know about that? Uh, all I know is that they're casting right now. They, I don't even know if there's a script ready, but they plan on doing when it's going to go all the way from his last, uh, from what I understand, uh, from his last coaching days all the way through the progression of uh, being the analyst and then the iconic Madden series that is now basically the football game to play on whatever platform you're on. But yeah, John Madden. Uh, and if you watch here, I haven't worked on my John Madden in a while. I used to be able to do a good impression, but uh, I won't right now. I'll save it. I'll save it. But I used to do a pretty good one. The Madden football games were pretty good as a kid. I remember having those in like uh, PSP or Nintendo DS. Those were those were fun days. Well, listen, as a guy who grew up in northern Alberta who didn't really have football, we didn't even have high school football. We were such a new city because it was an oil town that the way I learned the rules of football was by playing uh, Tecmo uh, uh, football. And by the way, shout out to uh, you and the other person in Fort McMurray that listen every week, Dale Denichuk. Double D is a loyal listener of the show, has been yeah. for, since day one of the reboot, and he comments every single week. Shout out to you, Double D. By the way, big shout out to not only Fort McMurray, which is uh, holy moly, it is uh, drier than a nun's crotch up there right now, and the wildfires are going on north of the city. Fort Chippewan, a uh, reserve that's about an hour north, uh, where a lot of really good hockey players came out of Trevor Grandjam, Stevie Yasu, a handful of these guys. And uh, they're, they've been evacuated. Sounds like they're going to lose the entire res. So uh, my heart, my heartfelt prayers go out to everyone up in northern Alberta and uh, Nova Scotia as well and all the wildfires that are going on throughout Canada right now. It is dry, dry, dry. Bring the rain. And not to be too heartless, but I did hear you talking on your morning radio show, which, by the way, if you're new to the show, my amazing co-host, Dave Wheeler, he has the number one morning radio show in the city of Winnipeg, as he has for 20 years. But I was listening the other day on my morning uh, bus ride to Muay Thai. You're talking about... So you lost your golf clubs recently because uh, you're missing an eye or because you couldn't afford to keep them anymore? Which one was it? A uh, handful of reasons between moving and having to downsize and, yeah, 
a caveat of reasons why I don't have golf clubs right now, but uh, I, I, I did keep a I, I kept my putter. I'm not getting rid of my Scotty camera, not a chance. Uh, but I held on to my putter. That thing sleeps in the bed next to me. Um, but uh, yeah, so what, 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 are you, what are you getting at? Well, what I was getting at was you said on live in the air the other day, if you could find somebody in the city of Winnipeg who needed a caddy, you would happily caddy their bag and their clubs run for them. And I wanted to ask you, will you caddy my gear around for me through the airports and the train station and specifically on the Vancouver transit system when I need uh, I need somebody to help me out at 10 in the morning? Would you do that for me? Well, he, well hear me out on my reasons why I would uh, I would caddy. So I've got buddies that are calling me because golf season is in full swing right now. No pun intended. Pun intended. Um, that was good. That was good. Right. Uh, so I, 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 my buddy's going like, Hey, when are we getting out for a round? I'm like, listen, I'm without clubs right now, but I'll be more than happy to caddy for you. And, and they all write back on a text message. They're like, ha ha ha. And I'm like, I ain't kidding. Like I literally love the game that much. And I truly believe that if you brought caddies back into the game and set it up more as a partnership, cause it truly is. You watch these guys out on the pro tours. They have their caddy. Their caddy has a lot of influence on how they're strategizing the game. Uh, they're reading putts. They're reading chips. They're suggesting clubs. They're checking wind direction. All that kind of stuff. They're reading the book. They're 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 like having like the you know when you have a sniper and they've got their person right there checking the wind and everything. And yeah, you sure you've seen that movie Jarhead before? It's a really good relationship. And I love the game so much that I I just love going out for a walk, being with friends. I enjoy the game. I like seeing nice shots. And I would be more than happy to go out and caddy for my buddies until I uh, end up getting a new set of clubs. I can go out there and golf myself. But just getting out in the course, I'm a happy guy. As far as carrying your bag around, it depends how deep it gets me into the uh, the tunnel. Like, do I have to drop it off when we get to the ring? You go, okay, bye, see you later. I'm hoping running all the way, like, from one terminal to the other at Toronto Pearson, drop it off, meet me back at the... Uh at the uh, the gate for the for the flight, you go back in the steerage. I'll go in first class, and then we'll meet back up when uh, the ride comes for the the Uber back to the arena for my new team for next year. How's that Perfect. sound? Perfect. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm in totally. Do I get ten percent of all winnings? <laughs> of what one twenty five a week? Yeah. Perfect. Twelve fifty a week. I'll take it. <laughs> oh God, the taxes are going to kill both you and I on that. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by, by the way, it was funny. I don't know if anyone saw the story. I want to point this out, but I, I think it gives credence to kind of what you're doing. There's like, like the fact that there's you know there's always hope. There's always a chance. Michael Block, a Cal- Californian uh, professional. There's a difference between your your club pro. I mean, you go to any golf course in your area and you ask to see the club pro, they'll whip you up and down the course any day. But these guys are club pros in comparison to your touring pros. Your touring pros are the ones that tour around and do the whole PGA tour and whatnot. So this, this club pro went and played in the PGA Championship, which they allow club pros to come and play in and qualify. He finishes in the top 15, qualifies for next year's, uh, got into the uh, Charles Schwab Challenge, and gets he's getting into the RBC Open. He pocketed $288,000 for the win. It's good money. Like, that's, I mean, that's, he probably doesn't make that. He'd make that in two years of the golf club that he's, uh, that he's a head pro at, if that. The funny part was his caddy had no idea that he was about to pocket $28,000 for a weekend's worth because you got to pay out your caddy 10%. So you're saying he stiffed the caddy or the caddy didn't know that he was in for a good size payday? Caddy had no idea. Caddy had no idea. Like, not a clue. He was just going out, you know, helping out a friend. Like, he traveled with him from California. He was just a buddy of his. He's like, oh, and I get paid? Sweet. $28,000 in your jeans is a pretty good weekend work. That's not bad at all. You got to stay where you got to go back down to the bank, deposit that in, and then hope they don't uh, claim taxes on that. But that's straight, awesome. Straight to the Chino. <laughs> Speaking of FPHL, what, you want to get into that real quick? Yeah, are we, are we got to find out what team you're going to, or do you want to mention our uh, title sponsor here first? Before we get into the FPHL expansion draft, let's get you into an amazing pair of underwear by the team of Sheath Underwear, the presenting sponsor for this podcast. They've been with us since day one. Let's get into it. Sheath Underwear, bamboo mesh, cooling technology is going to keep you cool in those hot summer days. It's going to be plus 34 in Winnipeg at the Palomino Club on Tuesday coming up, I believe. It might even be Saturday. You're going to need a pair of your Winnipeg. For me personally, plus 22 in Vancouver. Perfect. I'm cool. I'm crisp. I'm ready to go. My dick and my balls are separated because of the sheath dual pouch technology. They don't stick to the side of my leg. They're not bat winging. I promise you, Father's Day is coming right up around the corner. If you're listening and you have a dad, maybe uh, your dad is your mom, whatever the case is, if you got a horn and a hog, you got to get a set of sheath underwear. You're going to be thanking us later. And the only regret you're going to have, in the words of Jordan Belford, is that you didn't buy more. And you're going to mm-hmm. do so on the video version of the podcast. You go to sheathunderwear.com. It's in the video description. Click on that link and the code. Biscuit 69 B I Z K I T 69 will get you 20% off the best underwear money can buy if you're on the Apple Spotify notes. Same thing in the podcasting notes again. Biscuit 69 20% off the best underwear money can buy. It'll keep you calm, cool, and collected when you're traveling on the train and or plane to come watch me play this season. I'm telling you, it's like having a caddy washing your balls all the time. 
Uh, disclaimer, she Thunderbird does not come with a personal caddy. That is not included. <laughs> Imagine if you get a pair of underwear for 20 bucks and a personal caddy. For the, uh, man, you know, for the add-ons that people will get you to buy their stuff these days, holy moly, why not give it a shot? By the way, go out and caddy for a friend. If there's any golfers out there, go out and caddy for a friend one time. Try it. You'll be surprised how much you actually love not getting frustrated by the game and just enjoying watching somebody else get frustrated by the game. I recommend it. Go out and caddy for a friend. Awesome. Speaking of friends. Um, oh, uh, real quick, I just want to say thank you to everybody for listening. Uh, we just passed 5,000 subscribers on the video version of the YouTube podcast, as well as uh, a million lifetime views on the YouTube show. And then uh, I think almost seven, eight or 8,000, almost approaching 10,000 followers on the Biscuit Instagram page. So to uh, anybody supporting the show, thank you so much. But let's get into the reason why you can to the podcast. Shall we, Dave? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to introduce to you the new goaltender, Travis Ridgen, for the... Withville, Virginia. Oh, let's go! <laughs> let's go! The Wildville team. Why, did they don't have a name yet. They're the Wildville professional hockey team. And uh, just to clarify, if you're listening on the audio version, not the video version, that was not Mike Tyson. That was me speaking for the record, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Wildville. Now, out of curiosity, they don't have a team name yet. Same way as I uh, recommended some names for Baton Rouge. Uh, I still think they should be called the Red Sticks. I think that'd be an amazing name. Uh, but I, I, I was told by multiple people in the organization, absolutely not. They did hear that, apparently. The marketing guy heard Baton Rouge Red Sticks. Well, he had some choice words, but he said basically beat it. We're not calling the team the Red Sticks. So. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. But I got a good one for, for Wytheville. How about the Wytheville Wranglers? <laughs> there's, a lot, it, listen, there's a lot of lasso and cattle out, uh, dudes out there that would love to see their team named after what they do for a living. A bunch of Wranglers. I love it. How about the Wadville Wranglers with a uh, old school Washington Capitals, like a black and brown with a little like kiss of blue jersey? That'd be that'd be really crisp with a big like Wrangler. If you're on the video version, Wrangler right across the the chest. What do you think of that? I like a, I like a double W. And then oh, what what about a tractor pulling a trailer and it's got a W on it? <laughs> They're Wranglers, not trailers. They're Wranglers. <laughs> They're wrangling cattle. Well, that's what I was thinking. You have like the tractor that would you know. Do stuff on the farm. I don't know what you do with it, but you got a little trailer that the tractor pulls and then a big W, like a big now, floating blue W. No. What I see is a couple big horns coming up here and then there would be like a lasso around it and then the rope would come down and spell Wranglers right underneath of it. Dave, do you hear that? It's Barry Soskin, owner of the uh, Wideville Wranglers, getting ready to release me for that ridiculous idea I just had. I better <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay, enough with me joking around. Give me the details. So, 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 Wideville, you're going to be uh, Wideville. Uh, I, I God, I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm saying that wrong, I can't wait for you to comment down in the comment section on the YouTube page or feel free to uh, send us a message through the Patreon. I hope I'm saying Wytheville properly because I love saying it. <laughs> I, I got to say, though, um, so l let me just tell the whole story of the draft and how that came to be, how I found out and, and the details. So uh, when I, I got drafted today, uh, I guess it would have been 10, 30, 11 a.m., um, I had spoken to you know, GM in Motor City this morning. He says, hey, the draft's coming up. As you know, um, I'll let you know live where you go, no matter what. Thank you for everything. We, we had a very you know, nice, short conversation just thanking each other for our services, I guess. Um, he texts me, Virginia. And I'm like, Wideville? He's like, yep, you're going there. And so uh, within 10 minutes of you know, the GM text me, who's actually in the Zoom call for the draft. The draft was over Zoom. Within 10 minutes, I get my first message. Somebody messaged me on Instagram and somebody messaged me on Facebook. I don't even use Facebook. And they're like, hey, I live in Wideville. Thank you for playing hockey. We're looking forward to seeing you on opening night. Can't wait to have you come down. I'm going to be a member of the Booster Club. Like, like everybody from Wideville was so nice. And I'm not making fun of the people from Wideville. I'm trying to embrace the Mike Tyson accent. But uh, I probably got uh, over a dozen messages today just from different locals just uh, welcoming me with open arms in the community. And uh, yeah, it was very nice. So to everybody who sent a message, if I didn't get a chance to get back to you, thank you. And to everybody in the future in the Wideville, Withville, Virginia area, uh, looking forward to playing for you this season. Well, I'm I'm just looking at a map here, and uh, Wythe County is uh oh boy, it is like really southwestern Virginia. Like you've got uh, you got North Carolina just south of you. You got West Virginia just north of you. Uh, looks like uh, Roanoke is uh, about an hour twenty down the road. Very densely populated. So I think I think Wythe County isn't all that big, but the the surrounding population like uh, Bluefield, Pearlsburg, Blacksburg. Uh, what else we got here? Meadowview. Black Lick, Woodlawn, Fancy Gap, right? Dublin, Floyd, uh, Bones Mill, Rocky Mount, 
Now, I, I don't know if you know this or not. I, I don't know so much about Virginia, but I know West Virginia once upon a time was a huge coal, huge coal producer until that dried up and they found a more renewable source of energy. But w- I think you're going to get, man, I know how much you love taking the drone out and taking pictures. There are some uh, abandoned, really quirky little towns like all over that area north of the mountains. You're gonna, I, I think you're gonna really going to dig some of the landscape out there. That'd be incredible. I did hear coal, and I instantly thought train would be like the the Wyville Express. No? Ooh, that'd be a good name. <gasps> you, you That's like a that? great name. Yeah. Like a L.A. Kings, like a big black locomotive, like an old school steam engine with like a big like plume of black smoke. And think about this. Like, uh, remember how we talked about the Motor City pregame shows? How they turn off the lights, little like spotlight over the, the center ice where we come out to, and then Kid Rock, Baba with the Ba, comes out with the Ba with the Ba. Right? Remember that? Mm-hmm. What about this instead? We dim the lights, spotlight right over the uh, team entrance. There's a blow-up inflatable locomotive, right? But they they play, um, I, I don't know, what, what's a good song? Maybe a little God Smack. I, I don't know. Pick any rock and roll, a like heavy song. How about uh, Troubles, the, how, uh, listen, Troubles Coming Royal Blood? No, we're going to go ACDC, Thunderstruck. I was caught in the middle of a railroad track. <laughs> oh, Limp Biscuit rolling. How about we keep it rolling, baby? How there you that? go. Okay, so anyway black locomotive steam locomotive and then when uh, after fred durst finishes the all right partner let's keep on rolling baby you know what time it is a plume of black smoke from an actual engine like somebody floors the gas <laughs> totally not healthy for anybody in the arena and then the players come out and then you hear that dun, 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 dun. i move well, in i move out you know i'm telling you, all we have to do is uh, just fire up the zamboni and we'll get the plume of smoke going out of that thing that'll be great oh yeah yeah, if they got an old school non. What if they have an electric Zamboni? Because a lot of arenas have that. Oh, wow. Is, is Olympia making those or is Zamboni still making those? Oh, yeah. Olympia makes those with the electric ones. Nice. Nice. I guess you'd have to take the old school ones and just hammer the gas and a donut and just try to generate a, a plume like a tornado of black smoke. <laughs> I got I to gotta do a little more research now, now that I know where you're going. Uh, Wyeth County. I want to find out about the Wyeth County rink. I want to see what the capacity is of this thing. I think capacity is like 5,000, maybe 3,000. Am I wrong? What does it look like, Dave? I'm having a look here. Uh... <laughs> uh, while we are talking about that, though, I did want to say, uh, as far as the expansion draft goes, so a little, little bit of a backstory. Uh, I'd been in touch with uh, two, all, I guess three members of the Baton Rouge Pro Hockey team. I mean, today, yesterday, the day before, and then, you know, sprinkle in the maybe two weeks previously. Uh, I was told by... Uh, a member from Baton Rouge that I was going to be going the first or second pick they were taking, which obviously didn't happen. And uh, there was 12 players for Baton Rouge and for uh, Wyville taken. And I was the last pick in the draft, the third and final or the uh, 24th and final pick, apparently. Um, And then Baton Rouge drafted one goalie out of Carolina, Boris Bauer. He's a Czech boy. Uh, In Wyatteville, we drafted uh, Christian Pavlos from uh, the Columbus River Dragons, SPHL vet, and former goaltender of the year for, I can't remember which FPHL team, my apologies in advance, Christian. He's a Slovak, by the way. And then Ian Wallace from the Port Huron Prowlers and myself. So Wyville has three goalies drafted in the roster. Baton Rouge has one. I was the final pick, last pick, last overall in the uh, expansion draft. Doesn't matter, man. You got into the dance. That's the main thing. Good for you. That's awesome. Somebody wanted you. Holy man, you know what? There's going to be a lot of rodeo going on. A lot of this. The Apex Center is where you're playing. Speaking uh, found... of rodeos, can I tell you about, uh, there, there was a team that did contact me today, but they were going to be making a trade for my rights the second it's available for this expansion team, or no? Do tell. Tell us more. So if you've been listening to the show the past couple months, you'll know that there was a team that uh, put in three trade offers for me right before I ended up getting my, or before I ended up leaving Motor City for my hip surgery. They were very aggressive about pursuing me. Fortunately, Motor City declined all three times, no matter how many steak dinners and free hotel stays they offered. Um, this go round, <laughs> this team was telling me, um, "Don't report to any expansion teams. We're gonna, or we're, we're gonna just sign you day one of free agency." Obviously, I got picked up. So now the move would be to make a trade for me. So I was told by this GM that they're gonna be reaching out to Wyattville. Uh, shortly to make a trade for me and one other player. Again, this is all rumors at this point in time. I mean, maybe something will be confirmed by Sunday, and maybe I, I don't know what I'm talking about. But as of this moment in time, I'm a member of the uh, Wyattville Pro Hockey Team, unless otherwise noted. But there's a lot of things going on in the FPHL the last uh, two days. For well, just, uh, j- just to update you on my uh, on my search about the rink, looks like you're playing at the Apex Center. 
Uh, looks like they're doing some construction because right now there's about 800 capacity in the rink. 800? 800 capacity in the west rink and 250 in the east rink, but it looks like they're doing some construction. It's like a whole, it's like a recreation center. So they got two rinks in there and they got a swimming pool and water slides and everything. And rodeo. Oh, and- hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hmm. The introduction, I, Travis Rigen, will belly flop from the apex pool <laughs> into the arena on opening night. <laughs> full gear, full gear. It went on opening night. Ridgen's going in full gear into the pool after the game. <laughs> oh, what if they put me in a dunk tank, like right in the catwalk? And if you, if you, let's say, like you shoot a puck five hole on the ice and you hit the target from the catwalk, it drops me into a pool, just like a <laughs> hundred foot drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those uh, the the, uh, the the splash chair for charity where you throw the ball. I love that. No, great idea. Except it's a hundred feet up. And we don't have any insurance for any injuries or liabilities that. So to, by, uh, by, by the time this episode goes out, you could be on a completely different team, and this could be all for nothing is what you're telling me right now. I was actually going to mention the next part of that was, so for example, last year, Motor City drafted three goalies. Obviously, our boy Trevor Babin, who played from, they picked him up from Delaware. Uh, Brennan Colgan, who they then, they picked up from Watertown and then dished to the Columbus River Dragons. And Dylan Kelly, who's now in the ECHL, who they picked up from the Danbury Hattricks and then dished his rights somewhere else. So uh, I would say probably half the guys that got picked up in the expansion draft last year, their rights were dished. Uh, just simply because, let, let's just say, for example, let's use Motor City as an example. Uh, Motor City is the protected list. We want big, sexy Elias Thompson. Well, they protected him. Well, what if we draft two players that they really want or they wouldn't want us to take, and then we trade them back in exchange? So kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it like backhanded, but a little bit of a calculated drafting move. So it's very common for guys to get traded. I mean, for all we know, my rights could get traded tomorrow and then trade it again. It is uh, 6 p.m. Vancouver time right now. Uh, draft happened eight hours ago, and uh, I have not been in touch with anybody from uh, Wyattville yet. So who knows? Maybe they're working on a trade. Maybe they're working on getting the papers together to sign me. I don't know. I'm just telling you the news right here live on the show. Okay. In your first experience in expansion draft, congratulations. Yes, which will happen again next year when the Danville team comes in, and then the new teams come in, and it'll be a, a yearly thing, I assume. Well, at that point, I mean, listen, you put uh, you string some wins together, and you could be in the SP. You never know. That's what I'm hoping for. But one of the common themes talking to the teams over the phone was that the gap between the SP and the you know the Fed have never been closer. Just because you know over the the CLV the the flu, um, guys coming out of NCAA Division One don't want to go to the SP anymore because they they need money. Guys are hurting for cash, so the talent pool has kind of gone down on the SP. And then also as a result, I guess D three guys are hungrier than ever. ACHA guys are hungrier than ever, and the Fed's kind of come up a little bit. So that's the explanation I was given. So you never know. Nothing's really. Out of reach. I mean, Tom Brady was last overall draft pick in, in the NFL draft. I was last pick in the expansion draft. Who knows, right? There you go, man. What do they call Mr. Uh, Mr. Inconsequential there in the NFL draft? Mr. Irrelevant. I was going to say, did you see, uh, this is a little bit off topic. We'll get back to hockey in a second. But did you see the video of Aaron Rodgers rolling into a New York Jets practice looking like Scott Stapp, like he was in a Creed music video? Apparently he did that last year in Green Bay, too. Nobody noticed? Well, he showed up here because they played an exhibition game a couple of years ago between the Raiders and the uh, the Packers, which uh, I do not want to get into the logistical nightmare that that was. But what I will say is that he showed up in full cowboy gear. He had the uh, the string tie on. He had the boots. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if he thought he was dressing appropriately for where he was going. I don't know, but he dressed up in in costume. He had the full tassels on the jean jacket and everything. He looked good. It's a good look. He look, he looked like he had just finished wrangling somebody in Wildville, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> Came on down from Wadville to Winnipeg <laughs> to wrangle Wadville, some Raiders. Wadville County, everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, if you end up there, I am definitely coming for a visit because I am fascinated by that area of the United States of America. Well, you're coming no matter where I go. If, if they yeah. trade my rights anywhere in the league or if I end up in Wadville or wherever I go, you're going to be uh, coming with me. I did have an idea for 100,000 subscribers. I know we talked about it earlier. I wanted to, at some point this year, some, like, some random fan, a random supporter of the, of the vlog and everything, uh, for 100,000 subscribers on the vlog channel, I want to fly somebody in to an FPHL game, pay for hotel, pay for some meals, and then send you on your way, give you a real FPHL experience, and then uh, maybe get Dave in there too, and then you guys can both just heckle me from behind the bench and remind me, hey, I have another Pepsi Max, fat so. <laughs> <laughs> those, pu- those pucks aren't straight. Go straighten up those pylons. Let's go. Open that door faster. Trav, guys need waters. Let's go. Towels too. <laughs> no, it sounds like a great idea. That'd be awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing the the travel schedule that they'll have coming up and how they reformat the divisions with, um, I'm assuming, Motor City and Port Huron would join the East Division, and then you just have the the South kind of become its own division. So it's uh, it's never a dull moment in the FPHL. It uh, never has been, and 
will continue to be so, I assume, as the uh, summer rolls on here. So that's exciting. But uh, why don't we get into a little bit of playoff talk? What do you say, Dave? Yeah, listen, before we get into playoff talk, this whole Kyle Duba situation, have you been following this train wreck? Well, the guy says, oh, I'm not going to GM anywhere. I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to work anywhere else if it's not for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Two weeks later, he's in bed with the Pittsburgh Penguins, hired as their GM. Okay, I I, I think we're going to get into the same way a buddy of mine and I did via text uh, yesterday. And um, I I hear you. I understand. Like, oh, he's a liar. He was lying about it. Keep in mind, no different than anyone else, you know what your worth is, right? And that's a pretty good negotiating tactic, saying, no, I'm not going anywhere. My family's staying here. It's like, geez, if we really want this guy to be our GM, we're going to have to dig deep in our pockets to make sure we get him. Who's to say you didn't make a couple extra million dollars just based on, listen, if we're going to move your family, we thought we'd offer you, like, make him an offer he can't refuse. You know what I mean? That's not a, that's not a bad negotiating tactic, saying, no, I'm not leaving. Maybe it was a Danny Heatley situation. I don't know if you remember that, like 10 years ago, where the Ottawa Senators owed him like a $6 million signing bonus on July 1st, and they're trying to get him to waive his no trade, waive his no trade, and then on July 2nd, he waived the no trade clause, and they sent him to San Jose a couple of days later, but he collected the $6 million, which was a... Uh, infamously named Eugene's Lake that he bought the money with. By the way, I love seeing Snoop Dogg going in the Ottawa Senators. Boy, would I ever love that. you imagine that? He just rolls in the building, everybody's getting high, just smoking joints. Oh, I think, I, you know what? That guy, has he's enough of a businessman and a, and a good marketing person that I think it would be, I think it would be good for the league. Obviously, he'd be a minority owner, but I think he'd be a good face of the league, especially if they're trying to brand you know, hockey down in the United States. Gary, Bet- That would be a dream for Gary Bettman. Uh, he's got a bit of a uh, checkered past, obviously, with some of the businesses that he was running. I think he was running in a uh, uh, adult video uh, business at one point. So, you know, he's got his own brand of weed, and we're not sure. That's legal in Canada. No big deal. I think it's probably one of the reasons why he wants to buy a team up here. You imagine for the uh, pregame introductions, they dim the lights. They're like, wow, we got a really great smoke machine. Oh, it's just Snoop in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hot box is the Canadian Tire Center. I think Snoop would be a good choice for that team. Now, the uh, the other one is uh, Phoenix. It sounds like they are completely hoop. Like they are going to be homeless after this whole mullet experience. But I heard that Gary Bettman said that he would prefer, although Houston is a top choice for a lot of fans of the NHL, uh, that he would rather put an expansion team there because he knows he's going to make more money rather than moving a franchise there that's already existing. Phoenix to the FPHL 2024-25? Question mark? You know what? You draw the same kind of crowds, that's for sure. Hey, Binghamton has more seating than uh, the Phoenix Coyotes do or the Arizona Coyotes do. Yeah, in Mullet Arena. I think, what do they hold? Uh, 5,000 for, their, uh, for yeah. their college team? Yeah, Binghamton has a little under six, and then I think the Columbus River Dragons have eight, and then the Mississippi Sea Wolves have uh, seven thousand, and then Baton Rouge has capacity for nine thousand. So actually, yeah, I guess half the teams got more capacity than the Arizona Dirt Dogs there in uh, Phoenix. Unbelievable. Yeah, someone's got to be done because that is uh, to me that's that's something that you don't want on your uh, on your legacy, the legacy of Gary Bettman since he came around in the mid nineties. Been there a long time, man, a long time. Like going on thirty years of him being the commissioner of the league. Yeah, if there's one thing you don't want, it's a single bearded hair out of place. But thanks to the team at Manscaped.com, the next sponsor for the show, they'll keep you they'll keep you right and they'll keep you tight, won't they, Dave? That's a good transition right there. Absolutely. Listen, I don't know if you noticed at all, but I got a little uh, got a little trim done. I decided to do it at home, take uh, take matters into my own hands, and boy, would that thing ever come in handy getting the old mustachio ready. Man, it looked kind of like Dirt Diggler over there. I'll take it. I will take it <laughs> from the waist up. <laughs> you take anything you can get. But speaking of uh, taking it, I mean, or giving it, I should say. Sorry, pitch and catch. Uh, the team at Manscaped have engineered the brand new Manscaped Beard Hedger. It has 20 different lengths. I actually tapered my beard up this morning. You get the jawline of your dreams, the Tom Cruise jawline that you really want. You can shave in the mustache. I got it nice and thin right down the wood against my lips. Keep, uh, let's say, uh, nine and a half down the cheeks, all the way down. Add the uh, Manscaped comb that comes with it. Kind of angle, taper that jawline and the crimson chin look that I've been trying to get for years now. And uh, you'll be off and rolling. It also comes with an awesome beard shampoo, beard conditioner, creams, a little scrubby brush to kind of get the junk out of your beard. And you got to go to the Manscaped.com link in the video description on the video podcast. And the code BISCUIT, B-I-Z-K-I-T. There is no 69. It's just BISCUIT, B-I-Z-K-I-T. 20% off and free shipping, as well as on the Apple Spotify version. Same thing. Click on the podcast notes. Put in that code B-I-Z-K-I-T. Get you 20% off and free shipping from Manscaped.com. Mr. Wheeler. Back to playoff talk. I want to go back to Kyle Dubas for a second. I think he is going to be... I I don't think he got to fully take the reins in Toronto. I think Brendan Shanahan was looking over his shoulder way too much. And that... 
in, in most successful teams, the general manager is left to his job. You know, like I, I, I think Brendan Shanahan had a lot of say in who they were drafting and then who they were, uh, who were they, they were trading for and who was going up and who was going down. I think Kyle Dubas is going to get more of the key to the uh, to the rink when it comes to the Pittsburgh Penguins because they've got to start rebuilding a team. They've only got a few years left out of uh, Geno and Crosby, so his uh, he's got a big task ahead of him to get that team back in the playoffs before those two guys retire, so they can start training some of the younger staff there with the uh, tr- the Pittsburgh Penguins, but. I think Kyle Dubas is going to do very well. Watch for good things. And Toronto also lost their assistant uh, coach, Carberry. Did some reading on this guy. He's won at like every level of hockey, and the Washington Capitals snapped him up, and he's got a very similar job to do over there as head coach with uh, with an aging Alex Ovechkin trying to get them back in the playoffs. Wow. Yeah, just keep the empty water bottles and the uh, half-filled coffees that Timmy Horton's double-doubles away from Kyle Dubas so he can't throw them against walls. Yeah, well, listen, man. If there's one thing you want. You want a passionate GM. You know, there was a draft pick... Um that came to mind the other day, the the whole Bobrovsky situation, because I know we've been talking a lot about him the past couple weeks. I can't believe that Philadelphia gave him up for, for basically nothing. Like back in, uh, so he was drafted by the Flyers, played two, maybe three years of the Flyers. They traded him to Columbus for Steve Mason, Winnipeg Jets legend Steve Mason. The guy played, probably spent more time in physio than he did actually on the ice, I think 28 games played. But uh, they traded him when they had Ilya Brzezgalov, former uh, guest in the show, good personal friend as well. His son Vlad, shout out to him. He's playing for the U.S. National Development Program. Um, but yeah, they traded Bobrovsky for Steve Mason, and then obviously they let him go to Florida for the the ten million dollars, and he's earning every single penny of that contract right now. By the way, I will never forget this uh, Ilya Brizgalov. He's afraid of bears. Well, I didn't know bears. They're very scary. They're big and ah. I was really hoping that uh, the New Jersey expansion team would come to the Fed because uh, Ilya Brzezgalov and his son live in New Jersey and to get him on the show in person. I don't know if you ever listened to the old episode, or the old version of the podcast when we had Ilya Brzezgalov on. He just, he talked forever. He was hilarious, entertaining. The conversation was never dull for a minute. And he, and he did the whole thing while driving too. He's literally uh, in the arena picking up his kid, getting in the car, driving home. And then towards the end, he's like, guys, I'm home at my house. I have to let you go. <laughs> It's a hilarious I would, guy. I would love to have a chat with that guy, man. Space, it's just, he's so big. He's so small. Bears. Oh, I would love to have a conversation with him. So the voice that he used uh, for the Bears thing, when we had him on the show previously, he was asking me, uh, he was talking about something, and then he just, you kind of see the light bulb go off, and he says, what is the price of gas in Norwegi? <laughs> uh, you mean you mean Norway? He's like, yeah, you, you're in Norway, right? I said, yeah, it's... About 26 crowns a liter, so, I don't know, like four bucks. And he's like, God, you're going to need some gas for Christmas. Get the <laughs> gas can for Christmas. Oh, he's hilarious. I, I would pay, I would generally pay Ilya Brzezgalov good money to do an in-person episode with him at some point this season. So, oh. uh, Vlad, I know you listen, so Vlad, shout out to you, buddy. If you can get your dad to come in person to uh, Wadville, Virginia, that'd be uh, amazing get your dad on the show. Oh, man, what a what a linguistic experience that would be, Ilya Brzezgalov in Wadville County, Virginia. Why is everybody in a tractor? Why are the tractors? <laughs> and do you have bears? Because I will not come if there are bears. This place is so humane. It's big. All 8,000 people. <laughs> uh, Briz, please come on the show. That would be amazing. What, oh, what if we got into Winnipeg? We got to ask him about uh, the Winnipeg uh, comments he made like a decade ago, maybe 12 years ago. Oh, man. Yeah, he, uh, if I remember correctly, they weren't, uh, they weren't, they weren't, it wasn't a glowing review. <laughs> So he didn't want to come to Winnipeg. Yeah, I remember he was. Uh, I think he was backing up one night, and um, I, I can't even remember what the fans were chanting. The, the, the fans are crazy in Winnipeg. But just for the record, not tripping. Ilya Brzezgalov, he's an amazing dude. His son's an amazing kid as well. His son's going to be a star one day. He's playing for the U.S. National Development Program for, for goodness sake. But uh, yeah, Ilya Brzezgalov, awesome guy, and really would love to get him on in person, especially if we get him down to the Energy One Hundred Six Studios with you and I, Dave. We can just That'd be sling amazing. The with him. You had me at hello. That'd be great. With Mr. Brzezgalov. Spe- speaking of which, speaking of guests, so uh, I know we're about to wrap up the uh, the hockey season for pretty much uh, every league across the uh, across the world, and where summer will be a bit of a lull. So uh, the Travis Ridgen and I had a conversation, and what we'd like to do is still continue to do shows for you weekly. They probably won't be as long, as there won't be as much hockey talk, but we'd like to get a few notable names on the show and a few interviews and a little chat. Just you know. Might not be might might not, might not be as long as these ones, but we want to make sure that we stay in your ear throughout the summer so we can get ready for uh, for training camp coming up in the fall. Yeah, the goal is every single Sunday there's going to be an episode. Might be a little bit shorter, maybe the 20, 25 minute, maybe even thirty minute mark. Not as long as the in season ones, but they're going to be carrying on forward. Um, I believe uh, Nick the goalie, right? You love Nick the goalie, right, uh, Dave? 
What's up? <laughs> so him and I are going to be doing an in-person interview uh, next week, which will be going up on the show probably in two weeks. And also followed by me and Dave just recorded a YouTube masterclass episode, uh, just kind of outlining some secrets and some lessons and stories that I've learned in my entire career on YouTube and uh, with the podcast as well. So that'll be coming up in the future. Hopefully get Matt Murray on uh, the show sometime this summer. Him and I are trying to coordinate some logistics there as well as uh, some other guests. So it's going to be, don't worry, the podcast is not going away yet. Not yet. Wildville, Virginia. Oh, man. So listen, next week's episode, it could be a whole new conversation of me doing Google Map searches about small towns, about wherever you could be. But as it stands right now, you Wildville. You a Wildville pro hockey player. I'm a member of the Wildville pro hockey team. Yes, the Wildville, Virginia. Hopefully, I like the the Wildville Wranglers. I like that with the big black like steam locomotive just chugging away. That'd be an amazing no, no. logo. If, if you're going to go with the locomotive, go with the Express. I love that name. We got a major junior hockey team here in Manitoba, the Manitoba Major Junior Hockey, the Transcona Railer Express. Great logo. Sorry. Too many pucks off the head. I mixed up the Wranglers and the Express. But yeah, the Express train and the, uh, yeah, let's get a black locomotive on the ice and, yeah, in a black plume of smoke, the guys can come out to the uh, intro song, Limp Biscuit, rolling. But anyway, uh, this is going to be Sling the Biscuit, episode 44, a little bit shorter than usual, but this is the FHL expansion update. Um, I want to say thank you very much to everybody who listens every single week. Thank you to Sheath Underwear for sponsoring the show, our presenting sponsor. Uh, we do new episodes every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern in Toronto, 10 in Winnipeg, 9 in Calgary. Eight in the West Coast, Vancouver, San Francisco, Los Angeles. I have Dave Wheeler, my incredible co-host. I'm Travis Ridgen, the former, former goaltender of the Motor City Rockers, number 33, now playing for the Wyattville Pro Hockey Team. I don't know my number. I'm assuming maybe 33, but we do look forward to seeing you sometime next. Eight well, sixty-nine. Not some... It's hilarious. <laughs> it's my friend Doug. It's my friend Doug. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>